Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. So you already know what it was, you already know what it is, you already know what it will be. So the only thing today is, um, I just wanted to talk really quick while I'm in the park. I just did a nail change. Um, Brooke Schofield is like getting canceled right now. And that is so interesting because he literally just canceled like, you know, Clinton Kane, her ex, she just came forward about how that man was a psychopath and how he did her so wrong. And she was literally running the internet for a little bit like with that because like, you know, every girl can relate to a psychopathic ex. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, she was running this shit. And then also she came for Alyssa Violet because Alyssa Violet is called out for being a bully. And now literally just a few weeks later, a bunch of her tweets resurfaced and I'm like this must be Clinton Kane or Alyssa Violet that went digging deep or like some because who is a stand that much that's gonna like go all the way back you know to cancel Brooke I think it was Clinton Clinton reached all the way deep knew about this stuff and was waiting or Alyssa Alyssa I heard is scary 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 so yeah basically you guys Brooke is being called out for being a racist so because the whole thing with Clinton and Alyssa and all that mostly the Clinton Kane thing Brooke got really popular really big over like the past month you know kind of running the internet type shit you know when you're on top but when you're on top they always come for you so this is so crazy because I like Brooke because I like Tana like I like their little podcast I like how they don't give a fuck like I like that kind of vibes I love those type of people now at first, I wanted to defend Brooke, too. Oh, my God, there's a wasp. I'm about to freak out. I'm about to freak out. I'm about to freak out. Okay, we're okay. Um, sorry. Uh, when I first saw... Oh, my gosh, Brooke's getting canceled for, like, right, like tweets. I'm, like, thinking, okay, how bad can they be? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's years ago, 10 years ago. Like, we're really canceling people over tweets from 10 years ago. I'm, like, be for real. But when you see the tweets, it's, like, I want to defend her. I want to defend her. I want to be like, oh, my God, no, Brooke, like, I love her. Like, ride or die, like, you know? And then you see them. I was not aware of these tweets either. I think a lot of people are just being shocked because you think of Brooke as a sweet little innocent. Like, she couldn't hurt nobody. Like, she's so sweet. Like, I want to be her clean aesthetic girl. Like, oh, my gosh, like, she is so, like, such a great person. Like, she's a person I could never be because I'm a terrible shitty person <laughs> you know that's how I feel like I feel like I'm like fuck everybody like you know she seems like the watching her mouth like never swears clean aesthetic and I'm over here like trash okay and when I saw the tweets like when I actually saw them I was like it's super hard to defend it's super hard to defend because it is so blatantly obvious that like Brooke is like was a racist like racist like does not f with black people like racist towards black people and that's it's just sad to see because you just would not expect that from her i'm pretty sure if this was somebody else like you'd be like oh like you know it's just more shocking because like brooke is just such that clean girl aesthetic like nice person vibes which makes it like clean like clean girl aesthetic so that makes it even more shocking like no way she's like this right because I'm the type of person that's like, I'm not racist, fuck everybody type of thing. But Brooke just seems like she just loves everybody. So it's like, wow. So you guys, what really got me, like all the tweets are kind of like bad. And just the fact that it was so blatantly obvious that she was racist. Like she was even talking about how she's in a movie theater one time. And then her friend was saying some racial stuff. And the only minority is sitting behind them. Like just so blatantly racist. It's like, damn, it's so hard to defend. But what really was like to me you can't really defend was the fact that you know there's this guy named Trayvon Martin who was just walking to get like some pop and some candy and some like white I think he was a cop like off-duty cop was like watching him and then called the police and said yeah there's some black guy looking suspicious should I follow him and they're like no we don't need to do that we'll send someone out and then like the cop white guy still followed him and sh and um, he ended up following him and shooting him. And it was super blatantly obvious, like, with the phone call, that it's just, like, he didn't have to follow anybody. He wasn't in harm. Like, he went out of his way to follow the black guy and, like, right? And then also, apparently, the guy that got, was on the phone call with his girlfriend. And his girlfriend even said, like, yeah, like, he heard, she heard some, like, stuff. Someone was like, what are you doing here? Like, you know, it was so, it could have been avoided, right? So it was, like, a plain play it was so obviously like this guy just went and killed this black guy right obvious
19-year-old Trayvon Martin was walking home from the 7-Eleven after purchasing Skittles and iced tea. Self-appointed neighborhood watch captain George Zimmerman spotted Martin and called a non-emergency police line. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. It's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Okay. After the call ended, the dispatcher sent a patrol car. According to police, Zimmerman claims he stepped out of his vehicle to check which street he was on. That was when Martin attacked him from behind. Neighbors heard the men fighting. They reported hearing a single gunshot. The dispatch patrol officer arrived to find Martin dead on the ground. Zimmerman reportedly was bleeding from the nose. But new evidence from Martin's unnamed girlfriend suggests that it was Zimmerman who instigated the confrontation. The girlfriend told police Martin called her just before his death, telling her he was being followed. Martin told her he was going to lose his follower shortly before she heard him say, What are you following me for? What are you doing around here? came the reply. She believes someone then pushed Martin as she heard his earpiece fall and the line went dead. Seconds later, Martin was dead. Neighbours who went outside to investigate recall a nonchalant Zimmerman telling them to call the police. And the cop ended up getting like off the hook, didn't have to do time, like literally off. And Brooke tweeted about that like 10 years ago or whatever, 12 years ago when it happened. And was like, yeah, it was self-defense, like just super obvious like what side she's on. And then she went and tried to apologize you know, apparently these tweets have resurfaced before, but now because she's bigger, it's coming up again because it's just so obvious like that she's racist, it was racist. Uh, who knows if she's still like that, but people are are saying because she was just in college, like, what, three years ago, like, she was still a Trump supporter, um, like, you know, in just, like, a few years ago, I guess. Um, to me, it, I don't think really having being a trump supporter means you're racist though like i really don't think so i like <laughs> like to me the whole politic getting the politics involved like i don't really think that has anything to do with her being racist but the timing is not right because she saw aiden ross and trump on live or yeah on a live stream together and she liked the post and people were calling her out for liking the post because she liked it and the timing just wasn't right because like you literally just got exposed for being a racist and now you're like liking trump post so like I don't think her liking the Trump post like means she's racist or anything, but I mean, I guess she could have been a little bit more considerate because she's getting canceled for be like was being a racist. Right, you guys, I have had a lot to say about accountability lately and how important it is and how far it can go. And I feel like I'm not taking my own advice. Obviously, by now you guys have seen the tweets that are circulating around. They unfortunately are not fake. Those are real tweets, like real things that I said. First of all, I want to acknowledge that I feel the same way about them that you do. I think they're so disturbing, they're wrong, they're horrible, and they're disgusting. Uh, of course, I do appreciate the people who are coming to bat for me and, like, saying, like, you know, it was so long ago and, like, she's grown and stuff, but, like, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, it literally does not matter. They are horrible. I want to talk about particularly the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. Try not to be so emotional because I don't want it to seem like it's like a sympathy thing at all. I also don't want to blame anybody else at all. And so I'm trying like to be really careful about that. I just want to explain like and give some context into like my mindset at the time. Because I have seen like some comments today that are like, well, no shit. She's racist, like white Nepo baby, like a little like spoiled brat. Like, and that was not my situation. And my parents were addicts. So I was adopted by my grandparents when I was like 10 and I grew up with them from that point on and as is true for a lot of grandparents they're a little bit less progressive than a lot of us are now and my grandma has dementia so it was really just like me and my grandpa and he is a very very right-wing conservative man okay it was like my household was literally just fox news all the time rush limbaugh like if you guys know who that is like playing literally all day long through the house and that was just like the only thing ever that I had been exposed to. A lot of you guys have also seen my mom's Twitter because she was responding back and forth about the Trayvon Martin situation and I just should have known better. I know her and I should have known that she is not somebody that I take any sort of political insight from at all. Again, sometimes you like have these people that you like put on a pedestal and you think everybody older than you is smarter than you and knows 
everything and they do not. Truthfully, it took me a really long time. Like I know some of the tweets I was like 18 and people are like, yeah, like she was old enough to know better. And like, honest to God, you guys, it wasn't until like even after college that I really started to like shift my way of thinking. And there are people in my life who I might have looked up to forever who I do not agree with. And I think it's amazing now that people are like learning earlier on about politics and like forming their own opinions outside of like what their parents think or what they're hearing or whatever it is. But I, that just wasn't the case for me. I, whatever I heard, I passed on. I'm sorry, very, very sorry to anybody who is hurt by the tweets because obviously they are very hurtful. Like a lot of it is just like, like what, like why would I even say that? And I apologize for not having said something sooner. I just felt like I was getting these messages from people who like were hurt by them. And I felt like by bringing more attention to it, I was just going to be hurting more people. And that was not the right mindset. I should have said something sooner. And I would never let something go this far again. Like, I love you all so much. And obviously, I know that there are some people who are just like not going to care for me anymore. And like, I understand that. I just, I need you to know that like is not how I think that is not what I believe and I am 27 years old now I've had so much time to like learn and grow and like formulate my own opinions and they are nothing like they were when I was 17 18 years old now whether she's a racist today or not I don't know because people are like she pretended to be um like liberal views to for a paper and she says oh she's getting better um better grades because she's being a liberal on her like tests and or on her essays and stuff and whatever so like people are like i don't know like she faked it before maybe she's faking it again so who knows what her real views are check this one out there. forever follower this one is is interesting i'll say that i'll say it let's see so how things like socioeconomic standing health housing income and so many other things can be affected by your race it's loud i started faking liberal views when writing college papers, <laughs> and it's so concerning how much my grades have improved since. Ooh, that one's pretty bad. That's like, that's, nah. <laughs> that's just dumb. Like, that's for sure not true, by the way. She's like, oh, this seems. But also, it just seems like a really good liberal. I'm gonna give him an A. Yeah, and also maybe the whatever the right's opinion on something might just be complete bullshit. So, she's like, I stop. <laughs> writing racism i stopped writing racist <laughs> jokes about black people I stopped writing my teachers really like me a lot more I stopped now. writing I'm ignorant racist. shit and my grades yeah. improved it's crazy so again i wrote my college thesis on racial disparities it's she it's, tweeted in college like i'm faking liberal so. yeah that's a rough one and then to yeah, yeah 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 and then to bust that out is like uh evidence of you being an out <laughs> yeah it's so it's like get think think about it is that's not gonna that's gonna make you sound is, sillier do i think she's racist like i don't think she's racist to this day i think she's changed a lot because she did say her um sh her parents was a like <laughs> drug addicts and that she had to grow up with her grandma and grandpa and they were very like you know i mean d definitely racism l is learned so like the thing is i'm trying to be empath like <laughs> I'm trying to see it through someone else's worldview because, like, I didn't grow up with racist parents. Obviously, my dad's black, okay? So, like, it's not like racism where my parents hate black people, obviously, because if, when your family hates black people, they're not going to want to, like, you know, if you have racist parents, like, you're going to be taught, like, not to probably go anywhere near black people or black people, like, whatever. Like, you know, you don't want anything to do with black people, so, like, having a kid with one is, like, you would be disgraced from the family. Like, my parents are not racist at all. Um, never grew up racist, never grew up like thinking some type of way about black people because my parents just um, are not racist, my parents or whatever. So, but if I were to grow up in a racist household, then yeah, the chances of me being racist is probably, yeah, like, and if I was all white, you know, if I was all white from a different place and you were grown to hate black people, then yeah, like obviously the kid is going to be, have racist views. So like, I'm just trying to be like empathetic a little bit, but point blank period she was racist like she's grown up racist in a racist household and you know obviously people have to take accountability but like you can change like i'm not gonna sit up here and be like she can't change now the thing is like whether people want to forgive her or not i mean that's on the individual the thing is like that stuff like 
when she said, oh, the Trayvon Martin thing, like, I couldn't imagine how the family would feel about, like, oh, that black guy deserved to get shot. Like, it was self-defense. He wasn't even a kid. The kid was 17 years old, you know, 17, like, young, killed for no reason. Like, that's not right. Like, that's super sad, and that's, like, I wouldn't even joke. Like, that, that kind of joke is crazy, but... I mean, 10 years ago, people were making way more, like, crazier type of jokes. Like, the world wasn't woke. So, like, now when things from 10 years ago come up now, it's kind of like, whoa. Like, we're very sensitive to that kind of stuff now. Um, but, like, I couldn't imagine, like, you know, especially, like, I don't have anyone personally that was affected or shot by, like, the police or by someone or, like, you know, anything that happened to. And that happens a lot. Like, it happens a lot. So, I can't imagine, like, having my mom or dad for like that and then like someone's making jokes about it like that's I'm also not that like sensitive too like if someone like joked about like one of my family members like you know like that would suck but I'm also very like <laughs> I'm not I'm very desensitized to like strangers making jokes about like me and stuff so I don't know I'm just a little bit different that way because like people that are on the internet are very less sensitive or I sorry more sensitive like people make jokes about me all the time and I just take it I'm like whatever like I don't expect them to care about me because like they're just a stranger obviously strangers are not going to care about me like my if I passed away like people some people are not going to care like I know that I don't expect the whole world to care about what's going on in my life and in my family or whatever if my grandpa died like you know people make jokes right like so that's just kind of like how it is so I'm kind of already desensitized but I understand and I couldn't imagine how some people felt like that are like fans of Brooke right like if you're a fan of somebody like yeah like it's, it's just bad taste like even I've started looking at her like bro you were racist like I know it's hard it's super hard to like you know to like somebody so much and be a fan of somebody and to find out they're like if I'm full black and they don't like they were racist towards me like that's hurtful it's like whoa you were racist and you didn't even like me like that's crazy so I understand why people are so upset and like you know it's only right that she's gonna lose followers for that because like you were racist but I like the thing is like I can't relate to a racist person because I'm not racist so I don't know how they think I don't know how they act like I am not racist and I did not grow up I didn't grow up racist so like, she grew up racist in a different place and that's not an excuse like the thing is there's no excuse but i mean what do we want her to do like stay racist oh you were racist so you have to stay racist and that's who you are no like i do believe people can change and not be racist and she did say she's learned a lot now a lot of people just aren't kind of believing her because it's like mm, are you faking it like i don't know those those racist roots are embedded deep in you and i just can't relate i can't say anything i can't say oh people can change because i never been racist so i don't <laughs> i don't know what she's thinking or what's in her mind or whatever but i mean if she hasn't done anything in like 10 years and she hasn't been racist then it's like i mean i understand why people are gonna like stop supporting her as much it's fair and like you know she has to accept that i mean it's tough it's tough to defend that but it's crazy because like even uh like her friends are trying to defend her uh, like not trying but their take on it was like yeah like we love brooke but that is crazy like they couldn't even defend her like trisha paytas was like yeah like that stuff is crazy it's obviously hard for me to talk about because i am white so it's just like they they hurt me so i can't even imagine like right and like you're obviously like you said a person of color and stuff like that and then like the black community is like i my whole for you page is this and it's like i'm listening to like black content creators talk about this and like just like i guess i think they're you know the hurt that like like the the way it cuts deeper for them and stuff like totally. that isn't being like acknowledged and like what they're saying like makes sense and it's like that's all I've been listening to so it's like I know I'm not the person to comment really on this at all but it would be weird to like not talk about it since one Brooke has been on this you know podcast a lot um yeah I think it's I think there's certain things you just can't walk back. Like she, like this will be with her forever. Like that's just how it is. I mean, there's stuff I've said that you can't, you can never walk back and people will always think of you. There'll always be people who will just think you're a bad person. And like rightfully so, right? Some people believe that people can't change. Some people believe people just mask it because they get popular, whatever. Like, and everyone, that's what you should, you know, you, people show you this and they should believe that. So it's like, I, there's no defense I have for this at all. Like there's just none. Um, you know, somebody and, you know, you know, you don't know them as this person. These tweets came out and like shocked, right? Like you're shocked. I think there's so many people who have like bad tweets where it's like still horrible when you just like say slurs and it's really, really bad. And then it's like this other thing when there's like specific victims that get called out. And I think, I, I don't know, it's, it's, 
Mm, it's like it's as you can tell it's like super hard for me to talk about because again I can't fully comprehend I see these tweets I'm like oh my god this is horrific I think everyone can agree to that but it's like seeing people a whole community rather people that are just so um that it affects their day to daily life because I can never Brooke can never um I think even you like anyone in this room can never really understand what black people feel especially with like police and cops and stuff like that on a daily basis no it is hard even like like I said I can really as someone who is like Latino, but also like the privilege I have of being like white passing, yeah. the fact I never have to like have that fear, you know, because I am like white passing, you know, and it's like, it's that's why like I, there's no way to like say, hey, like everyone, like let's forgive her. No, like it is up to the individual yeah. people, especially with, like the hurt in the black community. It's, it's like you, you can't say, Oh, I, I forgive you, Brooke, because it's not, like, our apology to accept, you no, know? No, yeah. Like, all I can do is, like, speak for myself and, like, my experience with Brooke. And I don't believe she's that person now. That is just, like, my opinion. But I can't say, yeah. hey, everyone, like, forgive her. It's all okay. No, like, if people are still upset with her, especially this is news to so many people. So it's going to take time, you know? Um and, and it'll be with her forever, and she'll have to deal with repercussions forever. It's just, it's, un- it's just unfortunate, but that is what it is, I know. And it's like, but she, it, I guess in in the in the sense, like, she'll have to take accountability for the rest of her life yes, for it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think, um, and it, it's like hard for her, but also hard for like a whole group of people that are like her fans and like will continue to be her fans. And again, like I talking from experience too, it's just like you hurt a group of people and it's like you've hurt them forever and it'll always come up and it'll always be something you have to address. And I think you always have to apologize. You have to like keep apologizing. I think every time it gets brought up, like you have to keep apologizing for like the rest of her life. And I think I think that's the very minimum, right, to keep apologizing and keep, like, learning and understanding why it was, you know, so awful. I think, um, like, taking it out if we didn't know her, right, you watch the apology and you're just like, oh, like – and a lot of apologies are like this of people just not really taking full accountability, right, like placing blame on people is just like – and I've done it too. I've totally done it too because there's so many people you could blame when in reality, like, it was just a really – really bad take and really I think really hurtful take because again it's like real life people that she was like talking about and someone who like lost his life and stuff I don't know it's it it was really um it's really hard it's just really hard to talk about um yeah and it just feels weird to like not talk about it I know the people that watch us might be like oh well you know you're gonna just throw Brooke under the bus but it's just like I don't know like not talking about it would actually feel worse I I feel like it'd be like it was crazy like I'm shocked I didn't know she was racist like that before i mean you know but people do change like i do believe in change but again that's not for me to accept the apology on like i mean i'm half and half but to be honest i don't experience racist on a daily basis like or racism on a daily basis like people really experience racism and i hate that i hate people that experience that kind of stuff and like i hate racist people i don't like racist people so if i heard like brooke was doing that stuff like now in the current I'd be like, what the fuck, like, what's wrong with her? But 10 years ago, if she's changed, good. I hope she has, but it's it just, it's a hard situation. So, like, when she talks about it, because she's going to have to talk about it on her canceled podcast. I'm missing an earring. I know that. But when she talks about it on the canceled podcast, because uh, an episode's going to come out, it's going to be so interesting, because this is her first time really, really getting canceled, and she's very sensitive to this kind of stuff, so we will see. I'm going to go over it with you guys, because she hasn't talked about it yet, right? The canceled podcast comes out, what, once a week? It hasn't came out yet, so it's just going to be interesting to see what she says, because she made the TikTok videos apologizing, but it wasn't enough for people. Like, how she tried to deflect it was kind of crazy so we will see i can't wait till her little cancel podcast comes out and we're gonna see like what she's gonna say if tana is gonna try to defend her apparently tana made a tweet and then like deleted it because it was not a good take because like you were racist there's no there's really no coming back you were racist like it's just i can't relate i can't like there's nothing i can say because i just like i don't i'm not racist i don't think of like black people as like less than like she really did think like that at one point so that's different you know, but also she was raised like that, so it was very hard because obviously you're not gonna. I don't know. Like I haven't been raised in a uh, racist household, so I can't even relate. I can't tell you. So yeah, you guys. I don't know how 
easy it is to not be racist in a racist household. Like, I just feel like if you're in a racist household, you are going to be racist. So, I mean, I'm glad that she, like, now is saying that she does not agree with that. Like, obviously, I'd want her to say that she doesn't agree with it now instead of still being racist because the reality is some people are still racist, like, into their 40s, 50s, their whole life, right? So it's better change than never. But we will see. I, it'll be interesting to see what she says to see it because people are really mostly debating is she really changed or is she still racist low-key like is that how she really thinks because those were that was crazy like the Trayvon Martin stuff like that's so sad and I could see why so many people would be offended by that because the guy literally lost his life you guys like that's so sad um you know so we will see I'll keep you updated but for now let me know your opinion like I mean it's just a different take from everybody because everyone has a different world view and like obviously you know some people are more sensitive to that than others and I don't have a right to be like oh well it's not even that big a deal I mean I'm just desensitized to you guys like I <laughs> nothing is a big deal even if it's about me like I don't know someone could be like I think I, I get told to like off myself every like it's fine like <laughs> I just that stuff doesn't bother me but I understand some people are very sensitive to some things so I I get it why she you know not everyone's gonna support her so let me know